The Older World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 402 Salutations from Gyre. The lace tunnel finally came to an end, dumping her head over heels into a room after another grade she forced herself through. The soundstone waited patiently in front of her, held in her teeth as a flashlight once again, illuminating a room much like the one above the dusk statue, only with the ceiling twice as high. Valet stretched, reveling in the feeling of nothing touching her ears after having them flattened for so long by cold steel, arching her back and shaking her legs, and firmly deciding she didn't want to try swimming through that pipe ever again. Doddering only slightly, she stepped past a heavy spool of cable probably intended to be threaded through the pipe, ducking her head to pass beneath a lowered bar on the ceiling. It was the floor that had gone down, meaning that two broader pipes that formed the walls to the first room now only hugged the roof, and by crawling, Valet was able to slip beneath one, hoping to find a way outside. Her efforts were met with success. A grated iron door was the only obstacle between her and a stone staircase brimming with the scent of fresh air. She eagerly poked her way up, paying close attention to her cutie mark to avoid being found. The steps morphed into a spiral, and abruptly she came to a squat wooden door strengthened with bands of iron that made her flank stingle. She turned up her nose. That must have been a street-level exit opening right near patrol. No good. Hopefully the underground area would continue, and she could find another way out. Uh, Valet retraced her steps, scouting the entirety of the pipe room attached to the bridge. The only thing she found was a floor-level grate and a wall slightly wider than she was, and just tall enough for drainage, looking like it opened into another, lower room. She slipped through that as well, silently thanking whoever had invented bad ponies for the ability to shadow sneak, and wondering why a city that really disliked them that much had used entirely ineffective measures to stop them from sneaking around. The sound of running water graced her ears, and she moved down a slightly slanted surface to find a stream of something flowing past. Uh, was she in a sewer? It didn't smell exceptionally foul, but her cutie mark still warned her not to even think about drinking it. A storm drain, she decided, remembering the storms that fell from the mountains and deposited unending amounts of rain. Uh, that would mean it likely opened to the streets above, which in turn meant both light and a way out. But she scanned both directions of the long slanted tunnel and couldn't see anything, finally determining she was just too far below the street level to find anything. The tunnel ran roughly north and south, she figured, and though Starlight's scent was more to the southeast, she walked north, heading upstream, and constantly smelling for wafts of fresh air. The tunnel branched uncontrollably, and Valet avoided small or waterless passages like the plague, knowing the only way she'd be able to find her way back was by following the river and always turning downstream. She never found grates to the world above, though, and as her hunger mounted again, so did her frustration. It felt like she was wandering in circles, making no progress, and... Valet blinked, stopping short. Did she hear voices? She pressed an ear against a brick wall. Someone was definitely talking nearby. She couldn't make out the words or even how many voices there were, but they were close. There, in the ceiling above her, slightly behind where she stood was a trapdoor, a sheet of wood covering a hole in the roof and forming the floor above. Taking the soundstone and stowing it in her saddlebags, Valet swam up the wall, noticing now that the faintest of trickles of light filtered down through the boards. She reached the underside of the trapdoor, evaluating it, and determining she could get through, but stopped to listen just in case. Unfair is what it is, an angry male voice was saying, hoofsteps resonating that suggested someone was pacing. Everlast should pay for this, or Jire should take care of her, something. But now, if I keep my job, I'll have to travel and she won't be able to come with, or I could quit it, and, and... There, there, couscous, a grandfatherly voice consoled. Such are the dangers one acknowledges when taking up this line of work. Now that you have someone to take care of, action will help more than anger, and the best action you can take is to ensure neither of you come to any more harm. If you drop out now and choose not to renew your contract, 
They will let you stay here, and you can ensure that you remain in good health yourself and find a new life. But it's Stormhoff, the voice Valet supposed was Couscous protested. Seven generations, Grandpapa. All of my family history... A pause. I can't stand their culture either. So much snooting about, and their attitudes towards the Rosians. Valet perked an interest. And how much different from our own, my boy, the other voice finished. Jar is filled with rural creatures who need someone to be beneath them so they do not feel they are at the bottom of the Empire's barrel. Stormhoof is filled with those at the top who need someone beneath them so they continue to feel comfortable. And there are still no laws here preventing you from treating whomever you please, however you like. Uh, Kuskus sighed. I still don't know what kind of work a backwater unicorn like me could get staying in a place like this. You watch. I'd sign off, and the moment I did, nothing but scraps. How would I take care of her then, Grandpapa? That may be true, the grandfather admitted. But I think your horn is good enough to find something. Perhaps you could even become a teleporter. Remember, there are many occupations here that don't exist down in the Edgelands. A teleporter? Cusco sounded indignant. The whole point of quitting would be so that I could not travel. It's not like she could... A third female voice weakly grown to life. Couscous, don't worry about me. I'll be back in action and... She trailed off. Oh, the sweet lady wakes. Couscous snorted. She does, and I'm still horribly ticked they left her here to recover instead of a hospital. Not even going to check if she's all right. Dazzle, please talk to me. Oh, Dazzly faintly moaned. Hurts. You have multiple fractures and breaks, as well as quite a bit of head trauma and swelling, young one, the older voice consoled. You've been seen to by doctors, and they repaired your head and ribcage as best that they were able, and you should be safe from internal injury. Your legs and wings have been set and left to heal manually, so try not to move and tell us if you need anything. And, if it's any consolation, Wallace Whitewing visited the stallion who did this to you with that famous retribution of his, so you have been avenged. Mm, thanks, Grandpapa. Valet decided she had heard enough. Feeling no danger on her flanks and hanging under the trapdoor, she reached a hoof out from the shadows and rapped, figuring these were ponies it might help to get acquainted with. End of chapter 402